Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We're really thrilled you're here today because we're going to be talking about something really important that we all are involved with and sometimes it makes us uncomfortable to talk about it. Sometimes we recognize it or we think we recognize it, but do we? Our new best friend, Anthony Sartori, the <laughs> executive director and founder of Evolving Minds, is going to talk to us today about protecting staff from burnout. And I think a lot of us are going to be taking notes, Anthony, for ourselves, saying, <laughs> okay, what do we do so that we're not uh, dealing with this? So before we get going into a deeper conversation with Anthony, I just want to remind everyone that I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jared Ransom, the nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group, is off today. She'll be rejoining us tomorrow. Again, we are here today because we have these amazing sponsors, and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University. They have some really cool ads that are out uh, nationally. You've got to, if you check them, if you see them, you got to check them out. Um, really beautiful, beautiful marketing that they're doing. Um, of course, our friends over at Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. You know, tomorrow, Anthony, I think is our 800th episode. Um, amazing. I know it is amazing. And I don't even, I don't even think we're doing, well, I know we're not doing anything other than maybe saying something, but um, <laughs> we have a lot of archive, right? We have <laughs> a ton of stuff going on. So if you don't join us live, you can find us on all these streaming uh uh, broadcast platforms. You can get us on podcast if you like more of an audio experience. But the super cool, sexy thing is our new app that um, our executive producer Kevin Pace created um, with his team at the American Nonprofit Academy. You can scan this QR code and then be um, notified with a gentle update of what has gone on in the day. It's a super cool tool, and uh, we're really, really excited that we have been able to launch this. So again, thank you to Kevin. Hey, Anthony Sartori, executive director, founder of Evolving Minds. How did you start this organization and why? Oof, well, <laughs> big question. It, it is, a, it is, a, it throws me back a few years. So actually yesterday, May 15th was our three year anniversary oh. as a nonprofit, which is really exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We, uh, we started in uh, May of 2020, so right when the pandemic was happening, um, I worked in a grocery store part time while I was building Evolving Minds. So I got to be on the front lines, be an essential worker, and at the same time, building Evolving Minds into where it is now. Um, and throughout that time, we focused working with educators. So throughout the pandemic, we were we had. 20 to 30 educators for eight weeks at a time, building community and connection. And um, then we started to work in the grocery store. So the same store that I worked in, we built a workplace mental health program for the grocery store employees. Um, and from there, it's really been workplace mental health. That's our main focus. We've, you know, really done a lot of work in the nonprofit space, which is, you know, a big reason why I'm here to talk today about <laughs> yeah, yeah you know it's so interesting i i am fascinated by folks that looked at the pandemic the, the global health pandemic and found a reason to start something new i mean the nonprofit shows that way we started you know at the dawn of the of the outbreak because we couldn't go anywhere and right. so we 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 were like well we need to keep uh Community, our community going and so it, it was very very um super sketchy in the beginning and some might argue there are days when it is still sketchy but you know <laughs> um it's fascinating to me to meet people who leaned in and found opportunity in a time of chaos and it sounds to me um like that's something that you've done and actually on the topic of chaos if you will so first things first i've got to ask you yeah. How do we as leaders and, and folks in our in our sector, um, the beloved work that we do yeah. for nonprofits, 
how do we recognize mm. signs of this? It seems to me like it, it's like a one and done. It's like we, right. we confront it when everybody's left the building or it's like a bad situation. Right. How can we recognize that we're going in that direction? Yeah. So I think one of the things you just mentioned, kind of preventing a one and done by thinking about long-term strategy. What is our burnout prevention strategy? Okay. If we don't have one, it's often a sign that there will be burnout. Um, mm -hmm. It's really, it's so it's actually looking at what's going on. Can you give us some, like maybe some physical things that we could recommend? Like, are people calling in? Are they mm. more crabby? Are they, I mean, yeah. what are some yeah. things that we, we might see in our organization? Sure. So I think there's, when I think about burnout, I think about the individual lens, and then I also think about culture. So the systems, the culture in place, how the organization is operating. So at the individual level, when I'm experiencing burnout, it's usually cynicism, just a sense of anger, frustration, resentment at the world at large, the people I'm working with, the people in my sector, the nonprofit space, I might be really feeling, like you said, kind of crabby towards them. Yeah. Um, as well as fatigue. I think fatigue and exhaustion, uh, especially during the workday, but when you get home, if you're not able to recharge and rejuvenate mm -hmm. and it, that fatigue is just, uh, if it becomes chronic, then that can be a huge sign of, of burning out. Um, and also like I communicate a lot with nonprofit professionals via email, you know, in trainings and persons, and I hear the language that we're using to describe work. And I just want to highlight a few words because um, the language that we're using is a, can generate a sense of awareness about what our work culture is like. And so words I hear often are triage, slammed, um, drowning, underwater. Yes. So those, those are very violent, you know, words. And that just tells us about that workspace and what's going on there. Yeah, I mean, those are, uh, I would almost say those are words of desperation. Yeah. They're, they're desperate and, and they don't have an upside. They don't seem like mm -mm. Uh, you can get beyond it or get around it. Um, and so it's a really interesting thing that you would, um, you would bring language into this. Mm. It's a, That's fascinating because I don't know if that's something I would have um, overtly Mm -hmm. looked at. Um, so I, that's fascinating to me. That really, really is, you know, in, in terms of this piece of it, recognizing it, stepping back and saying, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, we got a problem. Talk to us about what yeah. that problem implies. I mean, what are some of the impacts of yeah. this real situation? Yeah. So the the culture piece too uh, can really contribute to a sense of of burnout and lead to, um, I think this one statistic that was just released by Mindshare Partners and the U.S. Surgeon General has released um, so much critical information about workplace mental health. But I think this statistic is very important. Eighty four percent of workplace conditions have contributed to at least one mental health challenge. Yeah. So there's a strong link between our work, our work systems, and how they're causing harm in terms of uh, increasing depression, anxiety, stress, trauma. Um, it's making it worse, uh, but it's also creating, you know, new conditions within people that may have not presented itself before those, those work environments. Okay, so then you use the word work environment. Mm -hmm. So many of us in the for-profit and nonprofit sector mm -hmm are still working from home or maybe yeah. maybe ratcheted up and do using a code working space. Yep. I mean, how does that factor in? Because that's a different cultural issue in itself, which I, I think we don't, yeah. I think we're just trying to figure this out. Yeah, well, I actually have a quote here that I wanna share, which came sure. from the um, Dr. Uh, Morthy, the, the U.S. Surgeon General, just released the Our Epidemic of Loneliness and Isolation report that just came out. And I think this speaks to the moment that we're living in because there are a lot of hybrid, virtual, in-person, you know, I've seen them all at this point, workplace environments. And there's one line in his report that I think is just striking. And it's social connection 
is a fundamental human need as essential to survival as food, water, and shelter. So in these virtual environments, when we're engaged in a productivity mindset, completing tasks, um, we there isn't necessarily that time and space to build community or connection. Yeah. And that can be a huge um, loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting thing. And, and I think that um, the jury's out, you know, I mean, <laughs> I feel as though during the pandemic, people were like, yeah, I, I want to stay at home because it's safe and I'm frightened and mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. my kids are at home or my parents are at home, whatever. But now that things are loosening up a little, I, I've got to wonder if people aren't going to be saying, yeah, I need mm -hmm. to go somewhere. I'm not as fearful. And I, I realize I miss that. Um, even just, you know, talking to women who say, I miss getting dressed, getting my hair done, getting my makeup on, um, mm -hmm. getting out of my sweats, <laughs> you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or fuzzy mm -hmm. slippers. So what do you see about that? I mean, do you see that we're in this piece of maybe, I don't want to use the word reckoning, but a redefinition? Yeah, I think for, so there, there's culture change that's taking place in the workplace. There's a realignment and a reimagining. Our work is reimagining the workplace and what's possible. Um, and what's the good news in terms of a lot of the hopelessness that we experience and feel on a day-to-day -day basis is that over the majority of uh, working adults, I believe it's 81%, and this was a study done by the American Psychological Association, are looking for workplaces that support mental health. So there's just been a giant culture change and workplace and uh, mental health in the workplace is now becoming more and more common, but also a priority. Interesting. And you know, where that would have been such a taboo uh, topic and in, in, in perceived as a problem, mm -hmm. as opposed to maybe a benefit or a, 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 vor, a core value. Yeah. Really interesting, really, really interesting. Well, things are changing and, and you know, we, we need to look at this and wonder how we are changing and what mm -hmm. that does look like. And I'd, I'd really like to spend some time on something that you mentioned and, and, mm -hmm. and, and get you to amplify this concept about yes. connection and community. Why is that? Why do you think that that is part of the solution or approach to making a healthier workplace because let's face it you know when we lose our teams and our mm -hmm. staff we can't do our work and we can't serve our mission vision and values yeah. so in the nonprofit sector this is a huge deal talk to us about this connection and community impact yeah so for me i feel like a team is like a miracle it's like a beautiful thing when people <laughs> come together uh -huh. And they, you know, they work together on a cause or a mission. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I think the unfortunate truth is that social relationships and belonging aren't valued or prioritized in the workplace. They might be seen as soft skills or fun or a nice activity, uh, but they are absolutely critical to the mission. Building trust, building empathy, uh, listening, creating spaces of um, where people feel appreciated, heard, and validated. Um, it's really, the mo I, I, I argue, the most important thing an organization could be doing because people are your greatest asset, you know, you're, you're the working people that you work with. Um, and so what that looks like for Evolving Minds and what we do with organizations is we build out a culture building meeting. So 20 minutes, once a week, usually it's in the all, all staff meeting or departmental team meetings, Right. 20 minutes. And then we bring in work culture skills, community building skills, connection-based skills, skills that foster meaningful relationships. So for example, I'll, I'll kind of illustrate what it looks like. You're with your team, you're, you're around a table, right? And there's about 15 of you and you're all sitting there and you're about to get into the work agenda, right? You're about to get into the work agenda, but first, one of your team members says, what are we grateful for? And so for 20 minutes, people are sharing and connecting. And we're using an imaginary ball as the ball goes around the space and people are sharing because people are in the virtual world. So you have to throw the imaginary ball 
into the Zoom screen to include them into the community space and, and to connect them with everyone else. Um, but then imagine if we adapted that question to what are we grateful for about each other? What are we grateful for about our mission? So okay, storytelling. That's like, <laughs> I've never heard anyone yeah. say that. Yeah. yeah, it's electric. It's contagious. It's it's powerful. It's transformative. Okay, you just like, this is a hair on fire moment for me. <laughs> I am stunned by that. Wow. Okay, so what have you seen when you ask that question? Some of my favorite, you know, I ask this question often, um, but I also, there's joy, there's goodness, there's hope, inspiration, peace, curiosity, love. Those are all skills that we share. What I see often is, um, teams that haven't really carved out that time and space to validate each other, validate each other. So all of a sudden it's like a flow. It's like a dam has been released and the water is just letting out. And I love when someone goes around and just sees the goodness or is grateful for each person because it's just been waiting, right? There hasn't been an opportunity because to share that, because, you know, that might be awkward if we're just in a, like a, a random zoom meeting where we're focusing on specific tasks, whereas <laughs> Our sole purpose right now is to see, you know, the goodness in each other or to be grateful for each other. So it becomes a, it, it shifts from more of like, I see you for your work product to, I see you as a human being. And that can be really powerful. Yeah, that is remarkable because I think sometimes we forget while, why we are doing our work mm -hmm. because we get so mired in the the problems and the issues. And for a lot of us, it's gritty, gritty, yeah. sad work, right? So um, this is a really interesting way to recenter on the joy mm -hmm. and the hope. Mm -hmm. um, and I love you also through that word in curiosity, <laughs> um, which I think is a, a super powerful word yeah. and uh, it leads to all sorts of amazing outcomes when we pursue that. Um, these have been really fun. What are some mm -hmm. other ways that we can kind of, you know, shake things yeah. up. Ooh, shake things up. I like to <laughs> shake things up. Um, well, I think with there's, you know, there's the gratitude, there's the joy, what brings, what brings you joy? So you can practice in the same way. Um, where do you see goodness in the world? Ooh, this is a good way to shake things up. Asking the team to see goodness in themselves. That's usually wow. the hardest yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, don't lead with that. Wait after <laughs> a couple of weeks or months. Yeah. Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, that's a that I like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's really profound. I think that's really profound, and I bet that is hard. It it's the hardest thing that you know. And and what's really great is when we offer these skills, you always has the option to pass the choice to participate or not participate. Okay. Um. So what ends up happening is someone may not feel comfortable seeing the goodness in themselves, but then the ball moves around the space and other people start to take a risk and be vulnerable. And that ends up inspiring them to grow. Yeah. I love that. You know, it's really an interesting thing because I can see the link between feeling appreciated and feeling valued and having merit and being part of a team when some of these things are verbalized. Yeah. Yeah, from my from my research, I've found that one of the greatest reasons why people leave is because they don't feel validated. They don't feel appreciated. And yeah. just the simple, you know, I see you, thank you, goes so long, so far. Yeah, yeah, it's so, it's so powerful. And, you know, it seems to me like we're waiting for the ecosystem around us, the clients around us, the programming around us, and we're not looking at ourselves and our yes. organizations until it's kind of too late, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. then it seems to me like we, we've, we're we having this discussion now because it's a problem, right? Right. right? Versus saying, wow, you know, here's an opportunity. Um, you know, one of our, our sponsors, um, Staffing Boutique, mm -hmm. uh, they are a a boutique firm for HR just mm -hmm. in the nonprofit sector. Oh. And I've noticed that that when we have them on, we're speaking more and more about um, these issues of how we keep our staffs healthy yeah. mentally and physically. And in the beginning, we never talked about that. Right. I mean, because right. it was like, you know, 
do your job or leave because there are 10 yeah. people lined up out the door that want your job. Now yeah. we can't find those 10 people lined up. And so we're having to think about right. what's in what's in our midst. Um, yeah. We don't have a lot of time left and I could talk to you oh, all wow. day. I yeah, know. it's flying. <laughs> it, goes, it goes by really fast, but huh. I'd love, you know, you started it off, started us off by helping us to identify how we could recognize a problem or potential problem where we're on that trajectory of of dealing with this concept now i'm going to ask you the other going the other direction sure. how do we know when things are improving because this doesn't happen this fix yeah. doesn't happen overnight yeah. what should we be looking for i think the, one of the first things that comes to mind is before we can improve things, we, we desperately have to slow down. The pace of our, our work, the pace of our work systems, they're, they're, they're unsustainable. Um, so when we slow down, we, start to, we can start to identify the needs. Um, and ultimately, I, this may sound really simple, but when your staff is smiling, laughing, and being yeah. playful, you probably, you're, the mental health of the community is most likely improving. You know? Yeah, as simple as that. Finding joy in that workplace. You know, I, it's not too long ago when American business really felt that if you didn't walk into the bullpen or the area where the office and everybody didn't have their head down and it was quiet and yeah. that nothing was happening and they weren't mm -hmm. being productive, if they were chatting or smiling or laughing or telling jokes, yeah. that there was something wrong. It's fascinating to me that the pendulum yeah. has swung, you know. Yep and in, in over a period of 30 years to redefine what a, a, half, a, healthy, a happy and healthy workforce yeah. looks like. Yeah. It's, it's different. Yeah, no, this is the culture change that I think we talked about earlier. And, and for me, you know, it's about nourishing that people first work environment, people and planet first work culture that uh, is a deep investment into the people and to their mental health and well-being, and, and putting people before productivity first. Mm -hmm. It's really, uh, it's an interesting discussion. And I think that um, we are in the middle of it because of all the things that have gone on, you know, in the last three, four mm -hmm. years. And um, it seems to me, we're gonna be talking about this for a long, long time as we get more of a perspective, as we move forward, yep. you know, like you mentioned these studies, I mean, my gosh, for the Surgeon General to come out and talk about this, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an enormous thing. Yeah, it it gives me a lot of hope, honestly, um, because for the Surgeon General to say that connection and community is a fundamental pillar of a healthy workplace is amazing. You know, it really is. It, it gives me a lot of hope. Well, and even that 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 conversation about the workplace is even mm -hmm. being aligned to health, physical, and mental. Yes, I think yes. is a huge shift. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm fa absolutely fascinated by it. Well, I would say that you have helped my mental health today. <laughs> um, this has been a fabulous conversation. And I think that, you know, we need to have you back on and, and yeah. review in the future, kind of like where we've, where we're moving and, and yeah. how this is looking, because I just feel Anthony, um, that we're in the middle of this storm and conversation yep. and, and, I use the word storm and not in a pejorative way, but kind of like mm -hmm. for a lot of us, this is the first time we've talked about this openly yeah. with our teams, as opposed to just dealing with that person that comes in one day and says, I'm done. I'm out yeah. of here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Really, yeah. really interesting. Well, check out Anthony Sartori's um, evolving-minds.org. I should say evolving-minds.org. <laughs> He's the executive director and founder of Evolving Minds. Um, they do some really interesting work in this space of helping our, our work environments be um, safer, more secure, more productive, and, and really aligning to so many of our mission, vision, and values. For some weird reason, Anthony, in the nonprofit sector, we're so good at, at saying what we want everybody else to do, but we don't right. always do it ourselves. Yeah. It's such that, a weird thing. Yeah, it's a paradox. <laughs> it really is. I mean, we're like the last ones to, yeah. 
self reflect and say, okay, you know, we need to do this internally and not just yeah. for our community. So yeah, really been fun having you on and, and chatting with you about this. Again, this is a topic that is only going to be more amplified. And I, I believe when, when the Surgeon General comes out like that, it gives permission and interest to so many other types yeah. of businesses to start talking about this. So yep. I feel like it's just the, the tip of the iceberg. Yep. You know, yeah. You really do. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, everybody. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, my co-host, will be back with us tomorrow. She's out today conducting a training. So we'll have her back. Again, we have these amazing sponsors. Most of these folks who've been with us from day one. And they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academies, uh, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out to really um, help us have conversations like we've had today with Anthony, which has been riveting. I've so <laughs> enjoyed this. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, everybody. You know, we, we have this mantra that we use at the end of every show. And we pretty much, I think we've done it from the very first broadcast. But today when I say it, it I, I hear it a little differently um, because of talking about mental health and our own physical well-being. And like I say every day, I plead with you to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Anthony, you made my day, buddy. Thank you. <laughs>